Hi everyone, it's Ishan from Fun FTC, and we're here with Team 16896 Black Forest Robotics. They're from Colorado. They've won every single event that they've done in person, and they're here at the MTI. They've got an awesome robot, really big, really solid. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting Fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. Let's talk about your intake, probably the most standout feature of your intake. You've got this big flap on there. Want to talk to us about how it's been working, what strategies you've had going into that? Yeah, so the design of this intake was we wanted something that could pick up bouncing rings. So our initial like design was to drive up to the return rack and pick up rings from there, and they come out bouncing. Um, and so we did a bunch of things, but we found that what worked is these big leather flaps that are pretty high off the ground, so that they don't really pull it in as much as they like bat it down a little bit, and then they can they kind of pull it in. And then the uh, surgical tubing intake takes over from there. Um, and the surgical tubing, tubing intake is really like a, just like a bomb proof, like does it every time. Uh, there's actually a cool feature of it where if we get, you can only have three rings, so if we get a fourth ring in the top here, it, uh, it'll spit it out uh, just mechanically. There's no programming involved with that. Um, and it just does that. Yeah. So what, what, what helped you decide what surgical tubing you use and Stuff like that. What? How? How did you come up with this final surgical tubing intake? Um, so the 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 we started with the, what is on these ones, which is just 70 durometer McMaster car surgical tubing, um, and that's kind of like the first thing we tried really. So it was kind of just like it was there, so we would use it. Um, but then we actually changed the surgical tubing on the top ones as it has to go over a curve, uh, a pretty dramatic curve, um, and so that's like 50 durometer of the same stuff. It's really sticky. It's uh, it's generally all around great. Uh, can I, uh, another cool thing about how we actually mounted these, which I think is one of the best things about them, is their X rails with just a hole drilled through it, and then you can actually put a set screw on it. Right. Really simply, so it's like a really bomb-proof way to do it. You, you don't have to like cut them up and put like weird 3D printed pieces on it. You just uh, really easily do that. Awesome. Really cool design. Definitely saw that on Wolfpack Machina. I know you mentor that <laughs> team. So yeah. really cool design there. So now you've got you've got the ring coming into the intake. It goes into this hopper. Talk a little bit more about the hopper and what goes into that. Yeah, so the hopper is really simple. It's just basically what all we wanted to do. Um, this uh, Basically what it does is there's like a servo in here. They stack up all three. It's really hard to see because it's opaque. And it, yeah, but there's a servo right down here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that flicks it in really fast, and it's really pretty small. Um, and it goes vertically instead of some teams do horizontally, which allows it to like, I don't know, it, I think it doesn't jam as much. Um, and then it just, it sticks it into the, the shooter and the shooter takes it from there and it spins around 180 degrees and comes out the, the Awesome, top. and talk to us a little bit more about your shooter. I see a huge piece of metal, mm -hmm. different types of wheels. Talk, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the big piece of metal is just an inertia wheel so that we don't, when, when you have to accelerate the ring, you have to use a bunch of energy. Um, and so this, like, uh, with more uh, mo angular momentum, you can keep up the inertia, but, or the inertia, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, and then uh, this would be a good, like, time to talk about the software, too, because yep. uh, there's a lot going on with the PID on that. Sure. Uh, so we, you know, we use a pretty standard PID uh, just to keep the wheel spinning, you know, at the same rate. Um, the whole match, uh, you know, just accounting for uh, battery drops over the course of the entire match. So, yeah. Awesome. And so, so you got this camera right here. Tell me a little bit more about why you got a sunglass <laughs> lens on top of it and what, what you use it for. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's the camera we use to do auto aiming at the goals. Um, and the reason we have a sunglass lens on it is because the camera can get overexposed and so you kind of get this like the red, especially on the red side, um, the red goal will get like very bright and it's hard to distinguish the hue from it. Um, so it kind of gets washed out when we look for the contours. Um, and so, you know, when we put the, uh, the lens on it, it helps that problem out quite a bit. And I'm also seeing a bunch of these holes on the sides. Do you have them <laughs> on the side? You got these ultrasonic sensors. You want to tell me a little bit more about those? Yeah, for sure. So these are MB1242 ultrasonic sensors. Um, we have eight of, uh, six of them. Right. Yeah, six of them installed, so two on each side, excluding the front. 
Um, and right now we're not using them, but previously in the season we were running fully automated cycles, so we could just reset our odometry um, at any point of the field as long as we're 90 degrees to the walls. Um, and so that's what we're doing, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so strategy-wise, you all have a very different strategy, right? You, I've seen you shoot mid goals in competition. I've seen you shoot high goals. You all are very aggressive on the field when you want to approach a robot, and people are scared of this thing. <laughs> so tell, tell us a little bit more about what strategies you have coming into MTI. You've played in person before. Yeah. What, what insights do you think you're going to bring in? Yeah, so uh, um, as, as Andrew actually just mentioned, we started the season um, basically with the approach that we we're going to run, like fully automated cycles. And we actually more or less got there. We automated cycles basically onto one one button press. You know, we were clicking one button, it would roll a, run a full cycle. Um, we took that to uh, in-person competition in Park City, I think in, in what, February? Yeah. Uh, February. Um, and we were shocked by how dynamic the game was compared to what we expected. Um, and that was back in February. Um, so coming into MTI, we changed up our strategy and decided, hey, you know, this game is going to be dynamic. There's going to be four robots fighting for the same shared resources, fighting for the same rings. Likely defense is going to be, you know, an effective strategy. Um, it's totally legal in the rules. Um, and so we were already running on a six-wheel drive, so we sort of cut the auto cycling um, idea and basically committed to um, a defensive robot. And the reason we chose to go with mid goals is because it sort of allows us to to focus on collecting and staying in a place where we're going to be as much of a, a pain as possible to the the opposing alliance. Right. Um, and so, you know, as soon as the match starts, we run over the other side of the field and and basically start just just causing trouble for the opposing opposing alliance. Um, so far, that's been a really really good strategy for us. Um, obviously, RP rankings, you know, our RP being based on score this year means that we're not going to be in contention for captain at all. But nonetheless, we've we've won. Uh, six of six for our matches thus far, um, and we've held some really competitive teams to 200, 300, right. 100 points. So um, it's worked out really well for us this time, and it's 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 a lot of fun to drive too. So really awesome, awesome bot. Thank you all for coming on the show earlier as well. We look forward to seeing you in competition. Hopefully, we'll see you in the finals. I want to see that defense happen. Uh, that's going to be it for now. We'll see you next time. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.